No, oh, it's Mark and the humble upholstery man. I've got an interesting little project here that I thought I would share with you. It's some kind of little dainty looking cabinet thing. I don't know what you call it, but it has a lot of detail on it. It's got a lot of this, um, has some kind of weird fabric in here and some trim work on it. And it's all down these legs and, and uh, it's kind of like a gimp on these parts. Uh, going all the way down the leg. Now I'm not doing anything with these parts. Um, the decorator on this job is going to take these and paint kind of a blue color that has this fabric that I'm going to put on it. She's going to do that herself down through here and up in these areas here I'm sure. Uh, my part on this project is you've got these three, you know, you've got a two sides and a back and then you've got this front that's kind of uh, broken up and everything. Now, this is the door and it's broke off from part of this door here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reattach that. Uh, you know, I'm gonna glue it, probably do some nailing, I mean, uh, stapling and stuff like that. I'm gonna be taking this little key part off and this other little, uh, you know, kind of what acts like a door stop part uh, trim piece because the decorator's not gonna have, have me upholster this part where it's functioning. Uh, we're just gonna close this part off of it and then I'm gonna upholster over this whole place, you know, and center a fabric on it. As the drawer came out of it, goes like that. I'm going to go ahead and upholster the face of this and the way I'm going to do it is is what I put on here. Uh, I'm going to center the product here and then flow it to where it matches on this piece to this piece. Okay I removed this, removed the door jam thing here it was just glued on. I'm starting to take these screws out. These are dainty little things. getting that off. Let's see what we got here, some screws here. I think I'll save this hardware for him just in case. Okay, the designer had picked out certain pieces that she wanted and where to have them, so we marked them. This has got a three on it, and this piece has a three on it somewhere right there. So what she wanted to do was kind of put this pattern in here for look, and it'll kind of mimic that on the other side. But before I put that on, I'm going to put I'm going to put a thin layer of Dacron on this. Okay, sometimes when you want to do jobs that don't require a, you know a full thickness of this type matting this is about three quarter ounce uh, you can take and kind of split it now some dacrons split and some don't uh, some split well and some don't this one splits but it doesn't split well so but it, it'll still probably for a smaller piece the bigger you go the worse it's going to be but on this one the pieces will be small enough i think it'll be okay when I put Dacron on something that I know is going to get double welt, I typically like to put it just about three-eighths of an inch from the edge of the finished product. I don't necessarily want it Dacron right directly underneath, but I do, you know, staple it down so, and I don't want it to look like it was too empty of Dacron up to it. So at about three-eighths of an inch, you know, you staple it down there and then you're about in the right spot. I'm going to use quarter inch just to make sure I'm not poking through there.
Now, now this pattern, it's hard to see it, but you know, the, the main focus of this pattern seems to be kind of in the upper end of this cut. So we certainly don't want to lose any of it. So, and I've got a fairly straight cut across here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it up here and kind of make sure I got enough to hide the, of that. I'm going to try to get it as centered as this is my focal point kind of in here with this offsetting it as much as possible. And then I can start stapling, laying staples across this top. Okay. Now you can kind of stay tack underneath. Um, it doesn't hurt to to pull it, you know, a little bit of tightness this way and a little bit, you know, kind of stay tack it, not fully staple it, just kind of stay tack it in there and kind of try to pull some of the slack out of here, you know, and you know, come back and take these out as we come down there. So it makes it where it, you know, when I staple, I don't staple right where my thumb pulls it because that'll pull a, put a harsh pull in it. So what you'll do is you'll kind of pull it snug and then staple just off to the side of it. And always pull down and away, you know, this way, like sideways and down. In the same way, you know, like that kind of you want to pull down but you want to pull it that way you don't want to pull straight down and you leave puckers now as with any time you upholster or trim or anything the idea is to kind of tack the top and get it tight to pull most tightness up and down so that when you do your side you're not stretching it you're just laying them basically down so that like if this were a stripe, if you're sitting there trying to, you know, line up your stripe this way, you're gonna have nothing but trouble. The idea is to get it stapled up here, stapled down here tight, and then just lay the edges over, you know, snug them just a little bit. You know, not you don't want it to be loose, but you also don't want to pull your line out of out of any kind of line out. Under the same principle that you pull across here, you, you want to kind of pull down like this, you know, pulling slack out this way and just snugging it this way.
Okay, that's sufficient, you know, to get these two pieces back together. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and, and put the fabric on it that I'm gonna have come out over it. Okay, right now I'm figuring out the line. This is the piece I'm gonna to use to cover the door. And here's that bottom area, just like it is in the back and that same pattern that is in the back. I'm just got it slightly raised and then this is where it needs to finish. So, but instead of just stapling it up here, which would be look tacky when you, you know, and be messy when you pull it out, I'm gonna kind of draw a chalk line in this area to kind of get an idea of where my line's gonna be. And then I can take and cut a straight half inch line above that. And then I'll show you what I'll do with it. Okay, I've got this piece that's going on that front door area, resized where it's you know, big enough for me to upholster with. You can see my half inch line that I marked here, and then I cut it, or the, the chalk line I put. I cut a half inch above that, and I'll show you why I did that. And then this is gonna cover that, that whole door here, here. Okay, I've marked me a center here. Pull my center mark here onto that piece of, fire, you know, area there. Have about my half inch. And then I'm gonna I'm going to clip that straight up and it's going to be just, the snip will be just below where it gets to the top of the board. Okay, now I'm going to take some half inch cardboard tack strip and I'm going to lay it pretty much flush with the edge of the top and butt it up to this edge there. Okay, now with some appropriate sized brad nails, about a, about a half inch, I'm gonna close these doors for good. Okay, now, I can treat this area just as I did on the side. I'm gonna take a, some, some thinner Dacron and I'll apply it just to the edge up here. Okay, you can see that's left it kind of a nice clean edge here. Okay, what I've got here is a piece of blocked out fabric that that flows with this uh, lower part that's going to flow up into this uh, drawer. And I'm going to make sure that 
that I mark where that line's gonna hit the bottom of it so that it'll flow on down with the rest of this. That's gonna be my bottom line. Stay consistent. We'll put a little bit of this thinned out Dacron on it. This is the bottom. And for your benefit, I'll do it upside down. So I need to find my center. And the way I'm gonna mark that is to actually have it in here where it is and then mark the center where my line is there. Okay, there's my line on the bottom edge. And it's straight with the... Well, just to hold it, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this and do this part. And work this down. get all the tightness up across here. I'm going to go down this side because I think you could see it in here so I'm going to come down to here. Now they're not intending to really use this. It's really just to set somewhere for looks. Thank you. 
what I'm making here is a, a, a kind of a reduced size what we call double welt to cover up the staples and normally we would use you know some 5 30 seconds welt on each side but um, when I needed a lot smaller you know diet you know or, or size I'll use my nylon spring twine which is a lot smaller a lot smaller diameter than the 5 30 seconds so what it does is make me a, a much smaller uh, double welt that looks more in tune with uh, this small project As I'm doing this, I'll pre bin that and then add a corner. Or so. And then I'll take a little bit of this right here. Here we're applying tack strip to secure the welt. To finish, I'm adding the black bottom or what you can call dust cover. <laughs> 